welcome to the At The Thief Nobles Tombs um, module. Now, this area is located in front of Hatshepsut's temple at Der El Bari, and this is where you buy the tickets. Um, you can buy uh, tickets, there's one for Pabasa, and there's one that's called the Asasif, and it's for Angkor and Herahuf. Um Also, wandering around that area, there is lots of excavations going on. Probably the most well-known um, is Hawa. Uh, if you look this up on the internet, you'll find the um, website. Um, it's an Italian expedition, and they've been over 10 years there. And it's a very, very interesting website, what they've been finding there. But there are a lot of excavations going on in this area. And uh, just wandering around, you can get lucky. And um, maybe um, a dig director will say, you know, do you want to have a look? Um, it, you know, it's just luck, just luck. But anyway, let's look at the tombs that you can go in officially. This is the general area of the Assasif. You can see Hatshepsut's temple there nicely in the Gebel. And um, the hordes are going into Hatshepsut. We, you know, there's six, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand a day at the height going into Hatshepsut. But nobody goes here. So you're, you're sort of sitting here looking at the tombs and thinking, why is nobody here? You know, this is brilliant. By the way, do you remember that donkey ride I've been telling you about? It follows this route along here and goes down there. So you get a really, really good view of this whole area. Um, so uh, when you um, buy your tickets, you buy them at the Hatshepsut ticket office. And if you look just across the car park, you'll see... Um, uh, the tomb, uh, the tomb there of Menchimat, and here, this is Pabasa's entrance here. Now the guardians hang about over there, so sometimes what you have to do is walk across that car park and walk up that way a bit and shout a lot um, to get their attention to come and unlock the tombs. Um, and this is where you go down to Pabasa and you walk across there to get to the other two. Now, I'm starting with him because it's possibly the least good of the three. But I still like it. It's got quite a good um, uh, sort of plan inside the tomb showing you where everything is. Now, these um, late period tombs are enormous. They really are, and these are the chief stewards of the God's Wives of Armen. Now, do you remember me talking about the God's Wives of Armen? They built chapels at Karnak and chapels at Medne Habu. And I said about how their stewards and uh, their servants had these enormous tombs. Now, it's actually very interesting because they, they uh, went round looking at Old Kingdom and Middle Kingdom tombs and picked those artistic styles and put them in the tombs here. They also collected lots of information about chapters of the Book of the Dead and some of our best knowledge of the Book of the Dead is from inscriptions in these tombs because they published chapter after chapter after chapter and really well organised them for us. So thanks, late period guys, for for doing that. Um, it's got a an upper and a lower level. Um, the upper mostly has gone, um, and you have to go down in that bit down there. You you go through, and it gets suddenly really, really, really dark. Um, so this is actually. One of the few occasions it might be nice to have a torch, otherwise the guardian's wandering along with a light bulb on the end of a electric wire, which makes me a little perturbed. Um, you can see it's not finished, this particular part. The um, uh, walls and everything haven't been dressed. But uh, we go through, 
and we have got some finished bits. So here, you see the seated man there, and you see the bees. Now these beekeeping scenes are, there's one in Hawa, there's one in Pabasa as well, um, and this is very sort of old kingdom look to it. Um, very nice carvings, I think you'll agree. Um, that you can see it's been reconstructed and the, the carvings put back in place where they belong. And here, look at this lively little ball with the lotus flower um, round its neck. It's very sweet, isn't it? I really like that. And here's some more here. Um, you, you can see the man there. Do you see? Um, and the glyphs, they're nice as well, aren't they? But it, it, it's, you know, it's not a massive tomb. It's not, you know, it's not a remote tomb, but it's, it's still worth having a look at. There's a, a nice little offering table there. So you would put all your offerings there and the juices or the meat or the blood would have run down that little channel there. And it's got depictions of the offerings on there. So if your nearest and dearest didn't come along and leave you offerings, um, the, the pictures would help. Um, now, the other uh, tomb on this ticket is a completely different period. So actually, th this is quite a good ticket set to see tombs from different periods. Here we have 18th dynasty. So very different from the late period, 25th, 26th dynasty. This is 18th dynasty, New Kingdom. And what we've got here is the um, pharaoh sitting on his throne. But the, the, the bit that I liked down here was all these traditional enemies of Egypt um, with their different skin colourings and different hairdos and everything like that. And then you've got the hieroglyphs to identify them. Um, very, very nice indeed. Um, the, there is also um, some dancers here. Um, uh, you can see the very, very light relief carvings going on here. And then you've got some graffiti as well in the middle of it. Um, this is some nice coloured hieroglyphs, coloured in blue. Now, one of the things about hieroglyphs, um, this is the uh, incised relief, the Elvis were raised relief. Um, do you see, hieroglyphs can be dangerous. Um, when you do the opening of the mouth ceremony um, and you make these pictures come alive so that they can sustain the body, so where you've written a thousand beer and a thousand bread and a thousand beef, um, if the uh, people that were supposed to come and bring offerings, the family, don't, that the uh, pictures will sustain the body that's in the tomb. And if you don't sustain the body, then the spirit's got nowhere to come back to. So it's really quite important. But when you do this, you can make some of the bad things come alive. So here we have a snake. And what they've done is they put knives through it. So it can't come alive and harm the owner. So you can see how seriously they took this magic. That's quite fascinating. I used that in one of my essays, by the way. If you've bought my um, Egyptology essays book, you'll see that picture in it and the explanation of some mutilated hieroglyphs. Uh, this is the uh, tomb of Prabhasa, this particular guardian I know very, very well. Uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a great guy and makes a mean cup of mint tea. Um, so if you see him, say, uh, Dr. Jane uh, sent you and uh, um, he'll make you a nice cup of tea. Um, he's another steward of the 26th dynasty period, so this is a separate ticket. Um, you have to go down a heck of a long way on this which isn't too bad going down, but coming back up again is a killer. Um, I nearly always have to have a rest coming out of this one. Now here, we've got some more beekeeping scenes, a little bit clearer here. Um, and you see them collecting the honey. And you see the colourfulness of the, um, the decoration around here. 
Now, when uh, Francisco gave a lecture at the Mummification Museum talking about excavating at the tomb of Hawa, he said that they spent a lot of time in the tomb of Bassa um, because th th they thought there was a lot of copying going on and that it gave them an idea when they were putting pieces that had fallen on the floor where they belonged by looking at Pavasa. Now this one's really quite interesting because it's, it's a fishing scene. So he's, he's caught his fish and then what he's doing here is taking the scales off, you see? Isn't it cute? And here he is. Here's Pabasa. Remember, to speak the name of the dead is to make them live again. Um, so, hi, Pabasa. He's got his uh, dog underneath his chair there. Um, and you see all these hieroglyphs. Like I say, loads and loads and loads and loads of chapters of the Book of the Dead, which has really helped us um, document it properly. And here, up on the ceiling, you can see some of the motifs that they use when they're decorating their ceilings. We, we think that they made um, sort of woven, carpety, ruggy things um, and hung the walls with them. Um, and they must have looked quite colourful in their houses. So they painted it on their ceilings as well. So lots of, of great colour there. So a nice little tomb um, to visit. And uh, good luck climbing back out again. And, and you'll come back out like I say, you will have been the only people in these three terms. And then you'll see coach load after coach load, after coach load going into Hatshep's hook. But you will have just seen something all by yourself in Kitten Luxor. So that's the end of the Assasif Nobles tombs. I'm going on to some more Nobles tombs in the next module, but these are, are lots of them, the Gurner ones. So see you in the next module.